everyone, welcome back to Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. In today's video, I'm going to be doing the Books and Life tag, which was created by Steve Donahue. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new. Um, my name's Alice, and if you haven't been here before, I have way too many books. I'm currently trying to read my way through a giant TBR of over 200 books. Today I'm going to be doing the Books and Life tag by Steve Donahue. I've seen this on a lot of my favourite booktubers channels and I do know that Steve Donahue tagged everybody in his tag so I won't be tagging anybody. So there are 11 questions today, we're going to get straight into them. So question one is on a scale of one to ten, one being a normal person and ten being the late Harold Bloom, how much are books and reading a part of your life? I had to look up the late Harold Bloom but he was a famous literary critic so pretty sure he was big into books. I would put myself on this scale at about a seven since I've been doing booktube. Since I've been doing booktube like books have pretty much taken over my life. Not the first time in my life that they have been a huge part of my life but it is the first time that I've maybe not had so many other distractions. Because of the pandemic I haven't been back to my job. I was previously working in a preschool. Yeah so books are a big part of my life at the moment but I wouldn't say that they were everything in my life. I do do other things as well as read and there can be days where I don't read very much. I'm gonna go with about a seven. Probably before booktube I was maybe at a five or a six. Probably last year even less. Quite a big part of my life. Question two is where does your personal library stand right now in relation to the rest of your life? Do you have more books now than ever? Fewer? How has your library changed? So I would say, and my husband would definitely say, that I have more books now than ever and that over time my library has just got steadily bigger and bigger. As I'm reading my over 200 books, if I don't enjoy a book or I don't think I'm going to read it again, I am getting rid of it. And by getting rid of it, I mean passing it on, donating it or selling it. So yeah, there is some turnover in my book collection at the moment, but probably I am at the peak of how many books I've had. From being a teacher I do have a whole garage um, full of boxes of children's books which yeah don't really know what to do with them at the moment but I do love them. A lot of them are books that I loved as a child or books that I've bought specifically for teaching. I don't want to part with them yet. Yeah I do have a very large book collection. I wouldn't like to say how many. I'm not even sure how many. We know that there are the 220-ish uh, books that I haven't read that I own as well as those I do own a whole collection of Agatha Christie which I have read. I own a lot of the books behind me I have read. I don't know, um, my husband thinks that I've got over a thousand books but I'm not sure and I don't really want to count at the moment but it depends what you include. Anyway, question three says take a mental step back and ask yourself what is the most likely first bookish impression a newcomer would have in your home? Well I'm hoping nobody would walk into my home at this very moment because my dining table has several stacks of books and it's been this way on and off a bit since starting booktube and starting bookstagram because I tend to get out piles of books, take photos, make videos and then put them away and there are a few stacks at the moment that I haven't yet put away so I do need to do some tidying up but in its usual state in my house there isn't normally books on the table so the first impression when you come into my house isn't actually necessarily of a bookish person because this bookshelf that sits behind me is in my dining room which is sort of through an archway to my living from my living room so you don't and this is on like the inside of the archway so you don't see it as you come into the room so I don't think and because of the pandemic I don't think I've actually had anybody 
round well, I definitely haven't had anyone round to my house since this has been the the book set up previously I had bookshelves elsewhere in this room and people did comment on them or say that I had a lot of books this is actually probably my least crowded bookshelf in the house so I really think that people would only start to get a bookish impression of me if we went upstairs upstairs is the room that my husband promised me what was going to be my library and it kind of is but it's also had to be taken over as his office so it's half library half office and in fairness during the situation last year he did buy me pretty much floor to ceiling bookcases which he's put in along one wall so my dream is a 360 degree library but the reality is I now have achieved one wall of books and that's fine there are books in my spare room as well that's where my Agatha Christie shelf is so there are a lot of books in the house but only if you go in certain rooms so I think the first bookish impression is there isn't one but if I gave people the full tour they would definitely say you've got a lot of books because as soon as you step into the library slash office it, there is a wall of books so people would know immediately that you're a very bookish person. Question four is how often if ever gulp do you clean or reorganise your books? Hmm. I don't really clean my books unless I am filming in front of them and they look dusty, then I might dust them. I tend to dust my Agatha Christie shelf if I go and make a video in front of them. Saying that, because my shelves are quite new, they've only been up for sort of under a year, they have been a work in progress because when my husband initially put the books back on them, they were in no particular order. So I have gradually over time been reorganising them into more sensible orders, putting all of the similar books together, that sort of thing. I kind of organise them by theme and by author, but not in a super organised way. Um, they still probably need a good reorganise. And I think the more of the more of the unread books that I read and decide to pass on, the easier it's going to become to reorganise the shelves. I don't excessively reorganise the shelves, only to try and fit fit more books on or to fit different books into different sections. Not often, definitely not often in terms of cleaning. They have certainly been reorganised more often since I've been pulling books off the shelves to make videos or to take photographs for Instagram. Question five is on average, how many books do you acquire in a given week? If you've been here on my channel very long, you'll know that I am on a strict book buying ban until I can get my TBR read basically. And I did have a bit of a birthday book haul in June. So I'm now strictly not having any more books until probably Christmas. I don't intend to buy any between now and then. I do acquire audiobooks semi-regularly. I hadn't bought any audiobooks for a while but I did use some of my credits the other day to buy some new books and there was an offer so in the past week I have probably acquired three audiobooks but that's not a, not a usual week so in a usual week no books are acquired. Now I won't buy another audiobook for probably quite a while unless I buy the next one in the series that I've been listening to which is Lee Bardugo's Shadow and Bone series so I probably will acquire Ruin and Rising within the next month. Question six is a bit of a different question which is what song is your current earworm? My current earworm, I feel like I've been blaming Bookstagram for a lot of things in this video. My current earworm I'm going to have to blame on Bookstagram because it's where I first heard this song and it was so catchy that I went on YouTube and listened to it and watched the video and I haven't been able to get it out of my head ever since. Not as bad as it was a couple of weeks ago when I was listening to it constantly, but it's still definitely stuck in my head big time, and that is Good For You by Olivia Rodrigo. So that's massively in my head. It's super, super catchy, especially the chorus. Question seven is what percentage of your self-control do you retain in a well-stocked bookshop? 
Well, at the moment, I retain all of my self-control because one, I don't really go to bookshops very much at the moment. And two, when I have been to bookshops, I've been just looking, not buying, and I've retained all of my self-control. So that's good. In the past, I retained some self-control, but obviously not that much or I wouldn't be in a situation where I had over 200 unread books so question eight do you ever feel the need to take a break from books and if so what form does it take I take a break from books quite a lot this year I've been really making a concerted effort to read every day when I do take a break from books I would say that some of the things that I enjoy doing when it's not as nice weather as it is at the moment were puzzles and uh, by which I mean jigsaw puzzles, mainly wasgidges, which are jigsaw puzzles that don't actually give you a picture of the actual puzzle. They just give you clues and crochet. I really enjoy crocheting things, but they're kind of wintry hobbies. At the moment in the summertime, it's probably on a day-to-day -day basis. My breaks from reading would be going for walks, making booktube videos, and although that's not technically a break from books. I don't necessarily even take a break from books when I'm doing things around the house because I quite often will listen to audiobooks especially when I'm cooking or cleaning. I have Harry the cat to take care of and my husband so yeah. I wouldn't say when I'm actually reading I normally feel the need to take a break from it at all but I do tend to get really easily distracted by looking at my phone. I I will have multiple books on the go and I rarely feel the need to take a break. If I did, I mean last year I probably took extended breaks from reading and didn't read for sort of weeks at a time but all that time I would definitely be listening to audiobooks at night. When I get into bed I, if I'm too tired to actually read a book I do tend to put my audiobook on and fall asleep listening to that. There are plenty of breaks from reading in my day. Question nine is when you meet a new person, how long does it take you to bring up books? Well, when I meet a new person, I am an extremely shy person. I'm not really that good at taking the lead and talking and putting myself out there. So I would say that I would not mention books. If books come up and actually in the conversation, I obviously will talk about books and how much I love them, but it would take me forever to bring up books because I don't tend to bring up new conversations when I'm talking to new people. If I did, it would be in the context of if I was in a place with books. So if I met somebody new in a library or in a location where there were lots of books, I might comment on the books to sort of feel out how things are going to be with the new person. But yeah, probably not very likely to bring up books at all. Question 10 is, have you given any thought or made any provision for your personal library after you croak? I don't really like to think about this question because I don't really like to think about that, but I have given it thought in the past and my thoughts have always been that I will leave it to my husband, uh, he'll get stuck with it and he won't want it so don't really want my husband to just have to get rid of all my books so I've always said that if I was to make a will now I would leave books to my mum as well. I'd like to think that she could have whatever she wanted from the books and my husband take the rest but obviously the reality is that they would undoubtedly be passed on donated i wouldn't expect someone to keep the whole collection together all i would hope is that after i'm gone that my books can make somebody else happy when i unhaul books i like to think that by not keeping them i'm giving them a chance for somebody else to enjoy them so i do love passing books on don't don't have my own children yet to leave the books to so unlikely to be able to leave them to my cat he doesn't really understand books apart from he likes to lay his head on them I do have a best friend who has a daughter who loves reading so 
maybe I would have to leave some of them to her. Let's hope that's not an issue that we have to think about for a very, very long time. The final question, question 11, is are you known among your friends and loved ones for your weird and probably unhealthy relationship with books? Certainly among my loved ones, yes. Um, especially now I've started booktube. My mum has always known that I'm 100% obsessed with books and she's been the main person who I talk to about books over the years and so she definitely knows that I have an unhealthy relationship with them and she's also probably the main person who's encouraged it over the years reading me stories buying me books but I think that's a good thing I think it's very important that people read to their children and that children get to hear many different people read to them in their lifetimes and foster that love of books. That's the teacher side of me coming out. When I was teaching I was known amongst my colleagues as the person, the go-to person to ask about book recommendations, children's books and maybe less so for books actually for them to read because I don't think that many people were so into reading. At my last job I was known as a person obsessed with books. I ran the preschool library and everything books sort of came through me. So I'm known by a fair few people to be a book lover. With my best friend and her daughter I am known as the one who buys the good books for presents. Um, I do pride myself on trying to get people a book every Christmas, every birthday and really try hard to get them the right one um, the best one for them at that time get them into new series get them into new worlds i suppose since i've been on youtube i've been a bit more open about uh, the scale of my book uh, book collecting problems and how much i read I haven't hugely told my friends that i'm on booktube so they maybe don't know the extent of my reading obsessions at the moment but in time i'm sure they will and i have enjoyed being known as uh, the book lady crazy book lady <laughs> i think there are worse things to be known as than the person who loves books and can always recommend you a book I'll stick with that. Yeah, so that was question 11 and that brings me to the end of the Books and Life tag. If you've made it to the end of the tag, please do leave me a comment. Let me know the answers to any of the questions you feel like answering or if you have done this tag, let me know so that I can go and watch it. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll give the video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already and you'd like to see more bookish content. I hope you'll all join me again soon for another video all about books here on Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now.